Little South Street Baptist Church, thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of your service and to share with you today. For me, it is a privilege and an honor. Before I start, I just want to honor a few people as I always do. First, I honor Apostle Maldonado, my spiritual father. And I want to honor Teacher John and Teacher Letty. I thank all of them for believing, me, believing in me, for trusting me, and trusting in me, and um, just loving me unconditionally. And I also want to honor Pastor Gideon and Pastor Irene. Thank you so much for this invitation. I love you. It is always a privilege for me to be able to work together with you and to build the kingdom of God together. Amen. So before we start, let's open in prayer really quickly. Father, we thank you for this day. We ask that your presence would come, that your spirit would be in our midst. Lord, come and teach us. Open up our eyes. Open up our understanding. Lord, change our heart. Work in us. Begin to mold us and make us and point us in the right direction that you want us to go. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. We give you all of the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And so today I want to talk about and share a little bit with you about persevering in difficult times. Amen. So without a doubt, we are living in times of crisis. The world is currently facing war. You know, we see it on the news every day. Disease, pandemic, financial difficulties, market crashes. The market is up and down. And so the word tells us in Hebrews 12, 28, that we are a part of a kingdom that is unshakable. Amen. The kingdom of God cannot be shaken and that we are called to become, we are called to be overcomers in this life. However, when these things, when circumstances, when situations, when um, difficult times or crisis arise in our life, we have the tendency to run and hide. We have the tendency to quit, to give up, um, to go back to where we were, to go back to our comfort zone instead of doing what we're called to do, and that is persevere. Amen? And the definition of persevere is to persist in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. And I found um, what I've seen happen over these last few years is that difficult season uh, or seasons have come into people's lives. And instead of running into the presence of God, they run, um, they run away or they stop going to church. They stop serving and they leave the church. And so I want to encourage you in this message today that if you are in that place where you are struggling with something, you're in a difficult time, maybe physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially, and you are considering throwing in the towel, you haven't seen your prayers answered, I want to encourage you today to persevere, to persist in God, persist in serving, Persist in doing what it is that you are doing in spite of the difficulty or the, your delay in achieving success. Amen. And the Bible tells us that we need to persevere and not to faint. That we need to be consistently and constantly diligent. The word of God also tells us that we should endure until the end. And endurance is the ability or strength to continue or last especially despite fatigue. So maybe you're tired, maybe you're mentally tired, you're emotionally tired, you're physically tired just because you've been doing and going and going and giving. And today God wants to pour back into you that ability and that spirit to persevere and to go forward. Amen. So the word of God also tells us to be steadfast. It tells us to be diligent in all things. It tells us to be persistent and to be determined. And so that is what the word of God tells us that as believers we should be. Where the world tells us, hey, it's okay to quit. It's okay to change it and go do something else. Leave things half done. It's okay to be mediocre in things. If you don't get what you want immediately, then 
um, then you just drop the ball, you leave it. But the Word of God teaches us as believers that we have to continue without fail. Amen? And the Word of God also tells us a few areas that we should persevere in, and I want to share those with you today. One area that we need to persevere in is our faith. Say with me, faith. In Acts chapter 14, verse 22, it says, Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue or persevere in the faith that we must, through much tribu tribulation, enter the kingdom of God. So we want to enter the kingdom of God, amen? And we're going to do that with much tribulation, but we have to persevere. We have to continue with our faith. Sometimes we don't see, like I said, the answer to our prayer immediately when we wanted it or when we think that the prayer should be answered. And so we start to think, you know, God, is God real? Is he listening? Does he love me? And the response to that is yes. God's love endures forever. Amen. He continues to love you. The thing is, we have to be persistent in our faith. Are you going to believe in God no matter what your circumstance looks like, no matter what your situation looks like, no matter what crisis is, or storm is coming your way? Are you founded upon the rock of Jesus? Or have you built your, your home uh, in your salvation upon the sand, which is constantly shifting and changing? Will you be steadfast and firm in Jesus? So we need to persevere in our faith, even though we know that many trials are going to come. Amen. The word of God tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16, that we have to watch and persevere in our life and our doctrine. It says, watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them. So are you persevering in your doctrine? And, and what does that mean? That means you're persevering in what the word of God says. And that Jesus died on the cross. He resurrected. He rose from the dead. He left the Holy Spirit for you and I to have power. He gave us his authority. He gave us dominion back. That, the dominion that Adam and Eve lost in the beginning, he gave back to us. Now we can walk in power. We can walk in authority. That is the doctrine in the life that you need to persevere in. Amen. Why? Because it goes on to say, if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. So whoever it is that you are sharing the gospel with, the word of God with, you're going to save yourself and you're going to save them by persevering in life and doctrine. Amen. What else do we persevere in? We persevere in prayer. Say with me, prayer. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, it says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasion with all kinds of prayers and requests. So on all occasion, pray in the Spirit. That means we need to persist in prayer. Is there a moment when you should stop praying? No. No. It says right here in the word of God that we need to pray on all occasion. When you're happy, when you're sad, when you're feeling depressed, when you're feeling lonely, when you're feeling tired, when you feel like giving up, when you feel strong, when you have joy, when you have peace, when you're going through amazing times, when you're in the good, the bad, or the ugly, we need to pray on all occasions. In other words, we need to persevere in prayer. There's times that I wake up up and I don't want to pray. I'm in an intercession group and there's times that the alarm goes off to remind me to, to connect to, by phone to that group. And I'm like, man, I'm tired. I, I worked a long day because it's in the evening. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this. But I understand that I need to persevere in prayer on all occasions. Even when I'm tired, I have to push through. We have to push through the tiredness in our mind and get into the place of being connected with the Spirit. Amen? 
What else do we have to persevere in? The word of God says in 2 Thessalonians that we need to persecure, uh, persevere in persecution and in trials. So we know that persecution is coming. We know that trials are going to come. We're going to go through difficult situation, but we need to continue to persevere no matter what. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 4 says, Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance and faith in all the persecutions and trials you are enduring. So you have to persevere. You have to have faith in the trial. In this moment, say, I want you to say, say, God, I stand in faith no matter what I'm going through. No matter the difficult time I'm facing, I'm going forward. I'm persevering. I'm persevering in your presence and I'm going to persevere in faith. Amen. What else are we supposed to persevere in? In James chapter 1 verse 12, it says, Blessed is the man that endures or perseveres through temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. How many of you today want to receive that crown of life? I don't know about you, but I want that crown of life. Amen? So temptation is going to come. The word of God says that temptation comes. And why does it come? It comes because of our own desire. When we're tempted with something, we're tempted because it is a desire in our hearts. But do we have to give in to that temptation? No. It can be a temptation to eat you know, overeat. It can be a temptation to do drugs, temptation for, uh, in sexual relationship with pornography, temptation to drink, whatever it might be. You know what your temptation is. You know the weakness, that weak area of your life. You know what it is. But we have to persevere through that temptation. In other words, we cannot give in to that temptation. Because if we do, then we're not going to receive the promises of God. We're going to uh, reap the reward of that temptation, which is sin. Amen. I don't know about you, but I would rather receive the crown of life that is promised me than the reward of sin. Amen. What else do we endure or persevere in? In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3, it says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ. So here it tells us that we are soldiers. I don't know about you, but I've, uh, I know people that have been in the army, in the, in the U.S. Army or in, um, in the Air Force, in different departments of the military and it's not easy as a soldier you're training constantly you're constantly training you never know if you're going to be put on the front line you never know uh, if you're put on the front line if you're going to return okay it's a there's a lot of stress that comes with it but here it says that we are good soldiers in other words we continue to fight no matter what is coming our way amen we endure the hardness we endure that hardship why because again we re we will receive that crown of life we will be saved in the end and in second timothy chapter 2 verse 10 it says, therefore I endure or persevere in all things for the elect's sake, that they may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. So we have to persevere in all things. So we persevere in these first six things I mentioned in your faith, in trial, in persecution, in temptation, in life, in doctrine, in prayer, in hardness. But we also have to persevere in all things, amen? Not just those, but in everything, in every moment, we have to make a decision to persevere. And why? What is the importance of persevering? Number one, like we read, we receive what God has promised us. We're going to receive that crown of life, amen? In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36, it says, you need to persevere. 
Why? So that when you have done the will of God, when you have been obedient to what God has told you to do, you will receive what he has promised you. So when we persevere, when we're persistent in God, when we're persistent in our faith, when we're persistent in his presence, we're persistent through trial and tribulation. When we persevere, we receive the promises of God. God just doesn't leave us. Amen. God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. He's a rewarder of those that persevere no matter what the cost it is. A lot of times we, we do, we want to throw in the towel. We want to run away. It's not easy. And I'm, if I'm honest with you, last year, if I tell you last year was the, one of the most difficult years of my life just mentally and emotionally. And I haven't shared it with a lot of people. I shared with just a few, but uh, a lot, uh, most of last year, I was severely depressed. I'm, I'm, I was still getting up in the morning. I didn't want to get up, but, but I knew I had to persevere. I didn't want to be around anybody. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to know anybody. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to go to church. I didn't want to go to work. I didn't want to be involved in anything. I just, I wanted to be so so disconnected mentally. I was disconnected from everything. Uh, I would go to the service and I would leave immediately after. I, I didn't want to be connected to discipleship. I didn't want to be connected to a house of peace. I didn't want to see anybody. I didn't want to know anybody. But I, I knew that I had to keep going. And it was just like a weight. There was like a, a heavy weight on me throughout the year. And, and I was very, um, I always felt sad. I always felt lonely. I felt very rejected. And it didn't matter what I did, how much I prayed, how much I read. But let me tell you, I persevered in prayer. I persevered in reading the word of God. And I'm like, God, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why I feel like this. I'm ready to quit. I'm ready to walk away. I was ready to throw in the towel. And just, you know, I'm going to quit my job. It's too much stress. I don't need this stress. I don't need this difficulty. I'll get a job closer to my work. You know, I'm making just about the same amount of money. I can do this. It's okay. But God would never let me walk away. And I persevered. Amen. And at the change of the new year, um, December 31st to January 1st, it was like that heaviness lifted. I don't know if it was the year. I don't know what it was. But I know that I persisted in God. I persevered in my faith. The trials and the temptations, the temptation to leave it all, to just let go of everything and to walk away. I persevered and I persisted and I stayed strong. I stayed true to, to God, to, to seeking God, to loving God, to reading his word, even when I didn't want to. And, and on January 1st, I woke up and I felt like I felt different. I was like, oh my gosh, something has changed. Something's different. And it always oh, took me about a week. <laughs> to be honest, it took me a week to realize. I'm like, I, like that sadness, that depression, it's gone. It, it had lifted. And I'm like, Lord, I don't know if it was the change of the year or what it was, but I'm so grateful. And so if you are in that place today, you know, that same place, it was a dark place. It was a very dark and lonely place. I'm here today to encourage you to don't give up. Don't quit. Persevere. Keep trusting in God. I was like, God, I don't have anything else but you. I don't have anyone else but you. Where am I going to go? 
You know, like David said, God, where can I go? If I go to the highest mountain, you're there. If I go to, to the depths of hell, you are there. Everywhere I went, God was there. And there was moments that I didn't feel God's presence. It didn't matter how much I prayed, how much I read the word, how much I, I, I saw God. I just didn't feel anything. It was like, ah, uh, I was cold. I'm like, Lord, is my heart hard? What's wrong with me? I don't understand. But looking back now, I understand that it was an attack and a lie of the enemy. You know, hindsight is always greater than foresight. Amen. But the enemy had come to attack my minds and my emotions to give me to quit, to, to get me to quit and to give up. But I said, you know what? I'm going to persist. I'm going to persist. And how did I do that? I'm going to give you some keys after we, of, of persevering, after we talk about the importance and consequences of persevering. But we have to persevere. Amen. Why? Because we're going to receive his promises. We, we persevere. Uh, it's important to persevere so that we can become mature in, in Christ. Amen. And we see that in James chapter one, verse four, it says, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. I don't know about you, but I don't want to lack anything in God. And it's just not a spiritual lack. It's an emotional, it's a physical, it's financial. It, it, it's so that we don't lack anything in any area so that we can be complete. That's what, what that word means. It's complete, complete maturity in every area. Amen. Why else? Do we need to persevere? We need to persevere so we can be saved. And we see this in Mark chapter 10, verse 22. And it says, but he that endures to the end shall be saved. I want to be saved. You know, I don't know about you, but I'm like, God, I have believed in you. I have given up a lot of things. I've endured a lot of things uh, up until this moment to give up now. I have too much invested in this relationship with you. I have too much that I have given to you to back away now. And that's how I want you to look at it. If you're going through this, you need to, to put that in your mind as well. God, I've given too much to quit. I have, I have done too much in my relationship. I've invested too much in this relationship, God, with you to go back to the world, to quit, to throw in the towel, I have invested my life literally into this relationship. So I'm not going to let go now. And I want to endure to the end so that I can be saved. Amen. Why else do we persevere? Like we read in James chapter 1 verse 12, we persevere to receive the crown of life. There's like seven different crowns that, that you can receive in the word of God, but I want, out of all of the crowns, I want to receive that crown of life through perseverance, through endurance, by being diligent and steadfast in God, in my faith. Amen. And what are the, there's consequences when we don't persevere. What are they? Those consequences that is that we're not going to be saved. And Matthew 10 22, like we read, it says, he that endures to the end shall be saved. But if we don't endure, then we're not going to be saved. We're, if we don't persevere in our faith, if we don't persevere through those trials, then we're not going to be saved. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to end up in hell. I don't want to ha have given my whole life to end up in that place of torment. What else? Uh, another consequence of not persevering is that we're not going to receive a harvest. We're not going to receive the rewards that God has promised. In Galatians 9, it says, let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we'll reap a harvest if we do not give up. So if we do give up and we don't persevere, then we're not going to receive that harvest. 
Amen. And any, any person that knows anything about planting knows that there's a seed that is planted and it takes time for that seed to produce fruit. So there are seeds of prayer. There are seeds of faith. There are seeds of time and giving and, and different seeds that you have planted. Well, guess what? That seed is maturing. It's coming forth and it's going to produce fruit. But don't be weary. Don't get tired as you wait for that harvest to come persevere because you know what you don't know when that that seed that you planted is going to come to maturation and it's going to uh, be in front of you as that reward and you're going to reap that harvest amen so don't give up why else what else is the consequence of not persevering our prayers go on un unanswered I don't know about you, but I want my prayers to be answered. In Proverbs 28, verse 9, it says, If anyone turns a deaf ear to my instruction, even their prayers are detestable. And if our prayers are detestable to God, then they're going to go unanswered. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I want God to answer all of my prayers. Amen. My personal prayers, prayers for my family, the prayers that uh, when I'm with intercession team, whatever prayer it is, I want it to be answered. When I pray for the USM students, when I pray for my team, whatever, whatever prayer it is, when I pray for somebody to be healed, when I pray for somebody to be delivered, when I pray for somebody to be set free from whatever it is that they're struggling, <coughs> pardon, <coughs> I want God to answer that prayer. Amen. And in order for us to persevere, there's some keys that we need to keep in mind and, and that we need to use in order to persevere. And, and there's a, a four or five of them. This is just some that I have. This is not every key. Again, just realize that. But these are the ones that I felt to share with you. The first key to persevere is to study, read, and know the Word of God. Let me tell you, in last year, that was the one thing that kept me grounded in everything. No matter what I felt, no matter what I was going through, no matter the turmoil in my mind, in my emotions, reading the Word of God every day kept me grounded. And I'm, honestly, I think that if I hadn't been reading the Word of God every day, I would not be standing here before you now because I would have quit. I would have thrown in the towel. I would have given up. And in Psalms chapter 119, verses 11, it says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And I made that decision to do that, to read the Word, no matter how tired I was. You know, I, would, I had the app on my phone and I would put it in, in um, the, I did like a, a yearly uh, thing for, to read the word of God in a year. And so I, I will um, press play because it'll, the, the, the phone will read it to me. Somebody re reads the word of God and I would put it on as I drove to work and it was just me and Jesus, me and the word of God. And that those moments sustained me. The word of God was life to my bones. It was nutrition. It was food to my bones. And I am hiding the word of God in my heart so that I won't sin against God. Amen. Another thing, another key to persevere is found in Romans chapter 12, verse 12. It says, be joyful in hope. Don't ever give up hope. Be patient in affliction, even when trials and affliction come, and be faithful in prayer. That is a key to perseverance. A, a third key to persevere is to overlook an offense. Sometimes we get uh, offended, somebody says something, they do something, or we're still living in a moment of the past in unforgiveness. In Proverbs chapter 19, verse 11, it says, A person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. 
So we need to let go of unforgiveness and offense. If we hold on to the past, we're not going to be able to persevere. We're not going to be able to go forward. We're going to be at a standstill. And I don't know about you, but I always see that God is on the move. And if we stop and God is moving, his kingdom is moving, the people around me are moving, it's almost like I'm going backwards because they're going forward and this the, the distance keeps getting greater. So if we stop and unforgiveness, we stop an offense, we're at a standstill. And when God is continually moving forward, it's almost like we're backsliding. And that's what happens. We begin to backslide in that place of unforgiveness and offense. So we need to let go of it. Amen. A fourth thing that we need to do, uh, or a fourth key to persevere is you need to set your heart. Colossians chapter 1 says that since you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. So we need to set our heart on God. And last year, that's one thing I had to do. And that's something that I, have, I did when I was younger. As a, as a Christian, as a young Christian, I, I, I set my heart and my heart is still set on God. Like God, no matter the difficulty, no matter what I'm going through, no matter the struggle, my heart is yours. My heart belongs to you. My life belongs to you. I don't understand why I'm going through this. I don't understand this difficulty, this, this depression, this sadness, this loneliness. But Lord, my heart is set on you. I'm going to read the word. I'm going to pray. I'm going to keep seeking you. Even when I don't feel like it. And we have to set our heart on God, amen, and on things above. And the four, the fifth thing that we have to do is we have to set our mind. And if you continue to read in Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, it says, set your minds on things above. So that is, those are some five keys to persevering. Amen. You have to study, read, and know the word of God. Be joyful, be patient, and faithful. Overlook offense and let go of unforgiveness. You have to set your heart and you have to set your mind. Amen. And I don't know, I think maybe there's some of you that you're dealing with offense, you're dealing with unforgiveness, or maybe you are like me, you're struggling in a, you're in a dark place. Uh, mentally and emotionally, and, and you feel like giving up. Today, God is going to set you free. Today, God is going to lift that heaviness. He's going to lift that burden from you today. It's no longer will you remain in that dark place. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I want to pray for you. I want to, to release something really quickly. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, every person who is struggling mentally, that is struggling emotionally, that is struggling with unforgiveness. They have unforgiveness in their hearts. They have an offense against a brother or sister. Father, right now, I release peace. I pull that lie of the enemy out. Uh, my God, we take them out of that offense. We take them out of that unforgiveness and we release peace. Father, we declare that thou will not hold them back. Yes, Lord. I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Say, Lord, today, if I have unforgiveness in my heart, if I'm holding an offense against my brother or sister, I repent today. Forgive me, Lord. I make a decision to let it go. I, do, I, I don't want to be at a standstill in my relationship with you, God. I want to endure and persevere. I want to keep going forward. I don't want to be that backslider. I make a, a decision today to let go of the past, to let go of unforgiveness, to let go of offense. Today, I choose to be free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. 
there's some of you, like I said, I feel there's some of you that you have been going through that difficult time. You've been struggling. You're tired. You've been serving. You've been praying. You haven't seen a, any um, answer to your prayers. But this is the moment to, to, to persevere. This is the moment to keep going. This is the moment to not give in. And I just want to relieve that, that same perseverance that, that God gave me last year and, and through, even throughout my life, and that grace to keep going, that strength to not give up no matter what, no matter what comes my way, no matter what the fight that uh, I was facing. I want to impart that perseverance over your life. Maybe you're somebody that you, you say, you know what, Tabitha, I'm okay. Um, right now I'm not struggling in anything, but I, I still want to, to be able to persevere when trials come. I want to release over your life as well. So I want you guys to close your eyes and lift up your hands. I just have a few minutes. I'm, I'm closing. Um, close your eyes. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your power. We thank you that you have given us authority in all things, Father. Lord, we thank you that your Spirit has given us the strength and the ability to persevere. We thank you, Lord, for the fruit of the Spirit that is being developed in our life. That love, that joy, that peace, that patience goodness, faithfulness, long-suffering, self-control. Father, all of these things are tied to persevering. And those fruit are being matured in our life as we, as we persevere. And Father, I release the spirit of perseverance over your sons and your daughters. Lord, Whatever trial they may be going through, whether it's physical, whether it's in their health, whether it's mental, it's emotional, no matter what it is, my God, right now, the same perseverance that you gave me, that ability to persevere and not give up, the same strength that you gave me last year, Lord, to keep going, to keep running the race, to, to not quit the faith. Father, I impart that to your sons and daughters right now. Those that, that are about to, or thinking about leaving this life, that, that want to commit suicide, those that think that the struggle is too difficult and they're ready to end it all. They say, Lord, I'm going to end my life. I'm going to walk away. Father, right now I release a spirit of perseverance over them and I remove the lie of the enemy that says that they should end it all that it's not going to get better. Do not make a permanent decision on a temporary situation. This lie of the enemy is only temporary in your life. The circumstance that you're walking through is temporary. Do not make ever a permanent decision for, uh, on a temporary moment. This too will pass. Father, for those that are, have been serving faithfully, tirelessly in church, in the ministry, my God, and they're ready to throw in the towel because they, they, they just feel overwhelmed. They feel tired. They feel uh, stressed. My God, they feel like they've given everything and they haven't received back. Father, right now, I release your presence. I release your love. I release your power. Renew the spirit of God in them right now. Renew the right spirit in them. Renew that spirit of perseverance in them. Renew that spirit of faithfulness in them today, my God. That they would stand firm. Like your word says in Ephesians, when you have done all, stand. Father, for those that are feeling strong right now, Father, I declare that when that moment comes, because those moments will come, they will always come. Trials, temptation, the storms of life come. Father, I declare that their house is built upon the solid rock. It is not built upon the sand. 
And I declare, my God, that your sons and daughters will remain faithful. They will remain steadfast in you, in their faith. They will remain Holy Spirit uh, determined. They will, I put in them a determination. Re renew in them that persistence, that diligence, that determination to go forward, to run the race in such a way that they obtain the prize, Lord that they would not quit, that they would not give up, that they would not throw in the towel, but they would keep going, Lord. Father, I declare that they persevere in faith. They persevere in life and doctrine. They persevere in prayer. They persevere in persecution and trials. They persevere through temptation. They persevere through hardness. They persevere in all things. And Father, I declare that they will receive what you have promised them. They will receive the crown of life. They will become mature, lacking nothing. They will receive my God, salvation, they and their household will be saved, my God. They will receive life. They will not lack anything. Father, they will reap that harvest because they will not faint. They will run the race. They will keep going, my God. And Father, I declare right now that they will be saved. They receive every promise. Holy Spirit, they receive, they will, they will receive strength. They receive perseverance. My God, they receive a new hope. Let hope arise in your sons and daughters today, my God. Father, I declare that they will walk in obedience and their prayer will be on their prayers will be answered. Father, I release that strength to set their mind and to set their heart on you so that no matter what comes their way. No matter what difficulty they face, my God, they will stand firm in you. Father, I thank you. I thank you for perseverance, that new perseverance that your sons and daughters have found. Father, I thank you for their lives. I bless them as they persevere in you. And Father, if any of them had had their house built upon the sand, Lord, today we place it upon the rock of Jesus Christ. And Lord, that when those tough times do come, they will now endure. They will not quit. They will not give up. They will continue in you. Father, I declare the same way you grounded me in your word, they too will be grounded in your word. They will be grounded in your presence. They will be grounded in your love and in your faithfulness, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I hope you guys receive, I hope you have a new um, perseverance, a new endurance. And I, again, thank you guys. Thank you so much, Pastor Gideon and Irene, for inviting me to be able to come in and share it with you. I pray that it was a blessing, and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of the day. God bless you.